while we may not be able to directly observe the heart beating within our chests, with the help of electrodes it is relatively simple to observe the electrical conduction that controls the cardiac muscle. In medicine, electrodes are used to detect the flow of electricity through the body. Two electrodes placed next to one another will produce a lead, an imaginary line between the two electrodes. Using a monitor, we can observe the flow of electricity along the lead. To keep things simple for this video, we are going to refer to a relatively simple free lead ECG. Free leads are positioned on the patient's chest, usually labelled red, yellow and green, thus giving us free leads or views of the heart, each of which can be displayed on a monitor. For this video, we will use lead 2, looking straight up diagonally through the heart along the bundle of his, AV node and sinus node. When learning to interpret ECGs, it can help to visualise an eye sitting behind one of the electrodes, looking back along the lead towards the other electrode. In this case, our eye is sitting under the green electrode, looking up and along lead 2 towards the red electrode. The eye is capable of seeing just two things, if an electrical impulse is moving towards it, or away from it. It can then display this information on a monitor or on ECG paper. There are two axes on an ECG. Along the horizontal axis is recorded time. Along the vertical axis is recorded the flow of electricity. If the electrical impulse moves towards the eye, then this, then this will be recorded as an upward inflection on the ECG. If the electrical impulse is moving away from the eye, then this will be recorded as a downward inflection. Understanding this relatively simple concept is crucial when trying to understand the mechanics of how an ECG works. The electrical impulse begins at the sinus node, from where it flows through the atrium and down towards the AV node. The flow of electricity is predominantly moving along our lead towards our imaginary eye. We therefore get an upward inflection on our ECG. We call this upward inflection the P wave. It represents the contraction of the atrium. The AV node will then briefly pause the flow of electricity to give the atrium time to push its blood down into the ventricles. As the electricity is flowing neither towards or away from the eye, we will get neither an upward or downward inflection on our ECG. Instead, we will get a straight horizontal line as time passes. We will label this the PR interval. It represents how long a pause the AV node causes in the conduction of the electricity. The AV node now passes the electrical impulse down into the ventricles. Because the left ventricle is slightly bigger than the right, to start with there is a slight flow of electricity from left to right. Therefore, the electrical impulse travels briefly away from the eye, leading to a small downward inflection on our ECG, which we will label Q. It then carries on down the left and right branches, moving rapidly towards the eye. This will give us an upward inflection on our ECG, which we will label R. Finally, the left and right bundles will carry the electrical impulse around the left and right walls of the ventricle, taking the electrical impulse away from the eye. This will give us another downward inflection, which we will label S. Together, the Q, R and S represent the contraction of the ventricles. They are collectively referred to as the QRS complex. There is one final bump at the end of the ECG complex known as the T wave. This can be thought of as the cardiac cells that have been involved in, in transmitting the electrical impulse, resetting themselves, ready to transmit again. The more technical name for this is repolarization. And that's our ECG complex. Finally, let's see if you have any pre-existing ECG knowledge. Have a look at this ECG complex. Does anything look unusual about it? If you think you know what it is that's a bit strange, then leave an answer in the comment section below. In the next video, we will look at a simple step-by-step -step method for analysing and interpreting an ECG. We will then apply this step-by-step -step approach to a normal sinus rhythm. If you found this video useful, please give it a like if you're feeling really enthusiastic, leave me a message in the comment section below.